In this video, I'm going to do an example of how to solve a problem using conservation of energy. We have a block of mass 1 attached to a spring. Then we have the block connected with a cable over frictionless pulley to a block of mass M2, which is hanging here. And the question is, if I'm letting go uh, from the initial position, at what position delta x will the block eventually uh, come to a stop? I'm going to be starting with uh, the general setup for conservation of energy, which is that energy final is energy initial plus the work done. Now, what are my forms of final energy here? I could have, we're doing mechanics, so I could have kinetic energy final. I could have potential energy final. And for the initial energy, the same. I could have kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial plus uh, any work done by any force. Now, in the problem setup, we were assuming that uh, the block was initially at rest and will come to rest again. So we have a kinetic energy final of zero and we have a kinetic energy initial of zero. Uh, what is the potential energy at the end? Uh, so let's just assume for a second that I put my zero potential energy level here. So this is zero, meaning when I'm below the zero at the end, I'm at minus mgh potential energy. So I'm going to have minus mg delta x potential energy in total. Uh, the block on the top does not change in height. Uh, so I'm going to not consider its potential energies at all, as they will be just be the same on both sides. What, however, I can consider with the block at the top is that there uh, will be a spring potential energy, as the spring will be extended by the distance delta x. So I have plus one half k delta x square as my final uh, energy. And that must be equal to my initial kinetic energy, which we also consider to be zero as we're not moving initially. And then my potential energy initially, uh, if uh, we take height zero as being the upper green line, uh, would be zero for the right block. And again, would be uh, zero for uh, my block number one here, because we're not changing height. And the initial uh, spring potential energy, if we're starting at the unextended uh, or unstretched spring, will be zero as well. Now comes the question of who is doing work. Now, if we do a, a little free body diagram of the left block, we get that the normal force is up, gravity is down. And I will have uh, the friction going to the left, if there is any. And I will have the spring force also going to the left, holding me back, while the whole system is traveling to the right. So I can see that between my normal force and the distance of travel, there is a 90 degree angle, so it cannot do any work. The same is true for gravity and the delta S I cannot do any work. Uh, the spring force here has an angle of 180 and definitely will do work. However, remember the important thing is for a conservative force, if we consider the potential energy attributed to a conservative force, then we do not consider the work done by that conservative force in the same equation, otherwise we account for it twice. So here we already took in uh, the potential spring energy, therefore we will not 
consider the work done by the spring. So the only work done on M1 is the work done by the friction. As it is in opposite direction, uh, that means we have an angle of 180 degrees. Cosine 180 is minus 1. So therefore, I will have minus the friction times the displacement, which is the delta x. What forces are doing work on M2? If I do that free body diagram, uh, I will see the following. So I have M2, I have the force of gravity going down and the force of tension going up, which actually reminds me, I completely forgot that there is a tension here going to the right. The two tensions, if my pulley is friction, as always being equal. Uh, so in the case of my second mass, uh, my force of gravity does work, but now the same thing as we have for the force of the spring, if we consider the potential energy of that conservative force, then we should not consider the work of uh, that force. So in this case we considered uh, the potential energy of gravity, therefore we do not consider the work done by gravity. Now what about the work done by the tension? Here, the work done by the tension would be tension times the delta x, and it would be negative because the tension is up while we are actually moving downwards. Delta s. And in this case here, we have a tension to the right uh, traveling at delta s, so plus tension delta s. So basically, those two works uh, cancel each other out. So we don't have to include it in the equation. We could, but they will just cancel each other out. So let me rewrite this a bit more clean. So we have minus mg delta x plus one half k delta x square is minus the force of friction times delta x. Now I want to solve for delta x and according to math there are two solutions. One of the, solution, one of the solutions being uh, the one where delta x is zero and we know that's the initial position so that's definitely for physics not a solution. So uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to divide by delta x as I know that delta x equals zero cannot be my final answer. That was my initial uh, answer or my initial condition. So with this uh, I will get minus m, I actually should be specific, this is m2 times g plus one half k delta x equals minus the force of friction. So if I solve this for delta x, delta x will be minus the force of friction plus mass 2 times gravity divided by 1 half of the spring force and that's my final answer. Now let's see if this makes any sense. So the bigger the friction is, uh, the shorter the distance is that the block will slide until it comes to a stop, which kind of makes sense. The bigger my mass 2 or my gravitational constant is, the further the system will go down. This also makes sense. And then if my spring is stiffer, meaning it will create a, a bigger force, uh, the less I'm going to be sliding to the right too. Now if ever you have a problem like this where actually the friction is zero, then this one simply falls out and you have uh, mass 2 times gravity over one half of the uh, spring constant. And if you need numbers for the friction, uh, in this case you'll be sliding, so you could always plug in that the friction is, in this case, uh, the normal force times the mu k, and the normal force you get it from this free body diagram by doing the sum of all forces in y direction must be zero.